In this video, we'll explore cylinders and how to find their volume. All right, a quick reminder of what a cylinder is. A cylinder, remember, has two circular bases connected by its sides. So when I think about a cylinder, I think about a soup can or um, perhaps a can of beans or something along those lines. The formula for finding the volume of a cylinder is volume is equal to pi times the radius squared times the height, where r is the radius of the circle that makes up the top and bottom base, and the height represents the distance between those two circular bases. Now there are two different ways in which you might be asked to find volume for a cylinder. You might be asked to find volume in terms of pi, and you might be asked to find volume when rounded to the nearest cubic unit or to the nearest tenth of a cubic unit. And we're going to take a look at examples of both. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get into this. In example one, we're going to start with a cylinder. And I draw my cylinders by drawing two of those circular bases and then connecting them. It's not fancy, but it gets the job done. This cylinder is going to have a diameter of 4 inches and a height from top to bottom of 5 inches. And I'm going to say they want us to, in this example, find volume in terms of pi. And that's important to notice those words in terms of pi. That means that there will be, when we are done, a pi in our answer. So I'm going to go ahead and start by writing down my formula. Volume is equal to pi times the radius squared times the height. And then I'm going to substitute the information that I have into the formula. If the diameter of my circle is 4 inches, then I know the radius has to be half of that, or 2. Remember, the diameter is the distance all the way across the circle from one edge to the other passing through the center, where the radius is exactly half of that, the distance from that center to one edge. So when I go to substitute into my formula, pi is just pi, but my radius now is 2, so that becomes 2 raised to the second power times the height of my cylinder, which is 5. And at this point, I want to leave a pi in my answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my calculator, and I'm going to multiply everything except the pi. You're going to need your calculator for this too, so if you don't have yours handy, go ahead and pause the video right now and get your calculator out. All right, got your calculator? I'm going to ha go ahead and in my calculator enter 2 to the second power times 5. And my calculator tells me the answer to that is 20. Keep in mind, I haven't multiplied times the pi yet. So there's still a pi in my answer. So 20 times pi, or 20 pi cubic inches. Or if I prefer, I can say 20 pi inches to the third power. But either way, notice that in my answer is a pi. That might feel kind of uncomfortable to some of you. It might feel as though the problem isn't finished because we haven't multiplied everything through. But in this case, when they ask you to find that volume in terms of pi, they want you to leave that pi in their answer. They don't want you to multiply through. All right, let's go ahead and let's take a look at another one. Example 2 is also going to be a cylinder, and again, I find it easiest to draw my cylinders by just drawing those two congruent and parallel circles and then connecting. This one I'm going to give a radius of 4 inches 
and a height of 10 inches. And again, I want to find the volume in terms of pi. And I think I'm going to go back and I'm going to change that height from a 10 to a 9. So once again, I'm going to start with my volume formula. Volume is equal to pi times r squared times h. And in this case, I know the radius is 9. And I know the height, the distance between those two, sorry, the radius, I need to go back and fix here. The radius is 4. And the height, the distance between those two circular bases is 9. So volume is equal to pi times 4 raised to the second power times 9. And again, I want this answer in terms of pi, so I don't want to multiply in my calculator times the pi. So I'm just going to get my calculator out and multiply 4 squared times 9. And my calculator tells me the answer to that is 144. And remember, I haven't multiplied through times the pi yet, so this is 144 times pi, and again, either cubic inches or 144 pi inches cubed. But either way, notice that because that says in terms of pi, I must leave that pi in my answer. And again, it might feel unfinished, it might feel not quite done, but that's what it means to leave a pi or to leave your answer in terms of pi. All right, moving on to example three. This one too is a cylinder. I'm going to say the diameter of the cylinder is 12 feet. And the height I'm going to put over here. But again, that height is the distance from the top to the bottom of that cylinder. In this example, I want to find the volume to the nearest cubic foot. So once again, I'm going to start with the formula for the volume of a cylinder. So volume is equal to pi times r raised to the second power times h. And I'm going to go and substitute all the information that I have into my formula. Pi times, well, in this case, if my diameter is 12, that means my radius has to be 6. So pi times 6 squared times 15. And notice that this time they want me to round to the nearest cubic foot. Or in other words, they want me to multiply through by the pi. They want me to put the pi into my calculator. So when I go to, to do this question in my calculator, it's going to look a little different. They don't want me to leave the pi out like they did in the first two examples. They want me to put the pi in. So when I go to my calculator, I've got to go and find the pi button. And the pi button, unfortunately for you, is just out of sight right here on my screen. So to find the pi button, the pi button is going to be all the way down on the left-hand side of the calculator, almost all the way down to the bottom. And when you hit that pi button, it should give you the option of a whole bunch of different symbols to enter in. You just want to click on the pi. And we're doing pi multiplied by 6 raised to the second power multiplied by 15. And once we enter all of that into the calculator, it tells us that this answer is 1,696 cubic feet. 
But again, notice that they want us to put the pi in. They don't want us to leave the pi out like they did in the first two examples. So volume is 1,696 cubic feet. Or 1,696 feet raised to the third power. So again, the real big difference here when it says in terms of pi, that means leave the pi out of the calculator. And when they say round to the nearest something, we're going to put pi in the calculator. All right, one more example, and I think that's going to be it for us for the day. This one, too, is another cylinder. This cylinder has a radius of 1.3 centimeters and a height of 12.2 centimeters. And this one we want to find to the nearest tenth of a cubic centimeter. So again, I'm going to start with that volume formula. And I'm going to substitute in the information I know. I know the radius in this particular instance is 1.3. I know the height in this situation is 12.2. And again, they're not telling me to leave the pi out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the pi in my calculations. So I've got pi times the 1.3 raised to the second power. times the height of 12.2. And after I hit enter now, they want me to round that to the nearest tenth. So I like 64.8. And this is either cubic centimeters, or if you prefer, 64.8 centimeters to the third power. All right, so that is the deal. That is the spiel with volume of a cylinder. You've got some practice problems to try on Castle Learning. And the title of that assignment that goes along with this video is Surprise of All Surprises, The Cylinder. Folks, you have been doing really great work. This distance learning is not easy, and people have been keeping up with their work and turning in good work and really putting in some effort and doing some high-level, high-quality work on assignments. Ms. Andre and I could not be more appreciative, and we just wanted to make sure we took a minute and thanked you uh, for everything you're doing. If you have questions, you can feel free to email either one of us or check in with us during office hours on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10 to 11 a.m. Stay safe, stay healthy, we miss you.